In this clip, I will show you the options that you need to select in order to create graphs for your experiments within the output menu. Before you can make graphs, you have to run your experiments in order to get the results of the model. Select the tab Output on the right side of the screen. Now you will notice that the experiment menu changes. The radio button list for the experiments becomes a list of tick boxes. Here you can select the experiments that you would like to run. You can choose up to three experiments at the same time. I will select both experiments. Then I select Run. You can find the status of the run in the bar at the top of your screen. In the top right corner, Swap shows you what it is doing. It takes Swap a few minutes to run your experiments. Now the screen is totally different. Three graphs appear in the output menu. At the top of the experiment menu, you can select the experiments that you want to visualize. Here, we see that the first experiment is selected, which happens to be the experiment that I want to work with. At the bottom of the experiment menu, the main control panel becomes visible. Here, you can set the options that are common to all three graphs. The three time series graphs that you see here are not the only way to visualize the data. Just below the Output tab, you will see three tabs, Time Series, Profile, and Balance. Let's take a closer look at the Time Series tab. Within this tab, you can plot the time series of the variables that are relevant for the entire system. Let's take a look at all three graphs. All three graphs have the same horizontal axis, indicating time. The variable that is plotted can be changed. As a default, Swap graphs the variables rain, actual transpiration, and groundwater level. Swap allows you to take a closer look at different aspects of a graph using your mouse. In a graph, you can use your mouse in two different modes, Info and Zoom. You can see by the orange color of the button in the control panel on the left which mode is active. Now, the Info mode is active, so I will explain this one first. When you are in the Info mode, you will see a vertical black line on the left side of each of the three graphs. Information about the variable at the location of the black line is given above the graphs. The time interval, which is a period of one day, is given in black. And next to it, in orange, is the value of the variable. Here, for rain, it is 1.6008 millimeters per day. You can see that there is an interesting peak in the amount of rain in July. I am curious about the value of this peak, so I will place the cursor on the peak in the graph. And left-click the mouse. The black line in all three of the graphs moves to the location of the cursor. Instead of using the cursor, you can use the forward and backward button in the control panel next to the time interval. When using these buttons, the black line moves through the graph step by step. For this experiment, without a crop, I am interested in the actual evaporation instead of the actual transpiration. Therefore, I want to change the plotted variable of the second graph. I go to the drop-down menu to the upper left side of the graph and select Actual Evaporation. Note that within this drop-down list, only hydrological variables are visible. To plot the meteorological variable, radiation, in the third graph, I need to open the Adjust Settings menu located to the upper right side of this graph. Here, the settings of this specific graph can be modified. 
Within the drop-down list of variables, I select Meteorology and choose Radiation. In order to see the graph again, I need to close the Adjust Settings menu. Now, I want to zoom in on the graphs and take a closer look at the rain events that occurred in June. To do this, I need to work in the Zoom mode instead of the Info mode. Therefore, I select Zoom in the Control Panel. To zoom in, I place the cursor on the graph just before the peak, and while holding down the left mouse button, I move the cursor to a position just after the peak. The area is now highlighted in blue. Then I double-click on the blue area using the left mouse button. In order to zoom out again, I double-click with the left mouse button anywhere on the graph. As I mentioned before, the time interval is one day. You can see this in the control panel under Time. You can change the time interval to hour, decade, or month. I would like to change it to decade. I select Adjust Settings, choose Decade, and then select Save. You can see that the unit for rain is still millimeters per day which means that the graph shows the value for each decade as an average value per day. It is also possible to show the total amount of rainfall for each decade. To do this, I need to go back into Adjust Settings, and I select Cumulative. I will also change the type of graph from Line to Bar. Then I close the Adjust Settings menu. Now, each bar on the graph visualizes the total amount of rainfall in one decade in millimeters. In this clip, I have explained how to adjust time series graphs. In the next clip, I will show you how you can plot the vertical profiles and contours of variables in the soil within the Profile tab.